assalamu alaikum and good evening folks this is your host mohammad daniel asif and you are watching my youtube channel daniel asif official i hope all of you are in the best of health and spirits folks when writing a thesis dissertation or a research paper abstract is absolutely pivotal because it sets the base of your research because your audience your readers before they dive into your research paper they're going to look at your abstract and you're going to then they're going to decide whether they term your research paper or your thesis readable or not so it's just like uh, before a movie gets released its trailer comes and after watching that one and a half two minute two and a half minute trailer you decide whether you want to buy a cinema ticket or not whether you want to be there when the movie is released whether you want to download it torrent or not similarly your abstract needs to be eye catching it needs to seduce the reader into reading your paper into possibly uh, buying it purchasing it downloading it printing it so that is why you need to make it eye catching you need to make it glamorous you know you need to add as much flavor and texture into your abstract basically there are some students who confuse that they think that abstract is just a portion of their research work copied and pasted no your abstract stands as a totally original self referential text you should not copy material from your research paper or your or from your thesis and put it into your abstract you should write abstract totally as a new form of text and abstract is written at the end so there are a lot of students who get confused that okay abstract comes at the very top so it i think it should be so they think that it should normally be written at the very start but that is not the case after writing your entire research paper or thesis or dissertation whatever you are doing it after you have completed it then is the time to write your abstract so the next question comes into mind is that where should abstract be placed abstract comes at the very top you know before the start of your introduction chapter and whether your abstract is just 8 lines 10 lines 250 words 300 words it stands as a separate section on a single page so it's not like if your abstract ends during the middle of the page you're going to start your introduction chapter no you leave after that abstract portion space for your keywords so again what is the importance of keywords it is that when you are publishing your research paper when you are you know uploading it for readers to you know search those keywords and find your work online on google scholar on base search engine or wherever that is where your keywords come in handy so you're going to include 5 to 8 keywords not many keywords although if you include a lot of keywords it will increase traffic coming on your website but it will not make your research engaging and absorbing for the readers because too many keywords will just confuse them that what it is actually about so you have to select you know keywords maximum 5 6 that are relevant that have been the most repeated in your research and that is when your research will not only attract the maximum sort of traffic online but it will also be enjoyable for the readers abstracts vary in length they can be 150 words 200 words 250 words 300 words 350 words depending upon your requirement so it is best to make sure that you consult with your supervisors and you check in your academic requirement that how many word limit is your abstract you have to satisfy justify that deadline then another important thing to note is that you have to use active form in abstract because if you will use passive form that will make your sentences very long okay it will take out the conciseness because three points you have to follow when writing your abstract that is a c i a stands for accuracy c for conciseness and i for important content okay so you have to be accurate in when you're writing your abstract you have to be concise you know you have to avoid verbosity and irrelevant technical terms and also you have to focus on the most important content because it is just 250 to 300 words summary of your entire research work so if you will start including all the examples all your methodologies all your findings then that your abstract portion will get very lengthy and you will not be able to justify it within the allotted word limit so that is why you will only have to focus on the most important and relevant content okay so next up how you divide your abstract i'm going to give you one simple rule for understanding it and memorizing it you have to remember the code i m r c i for introduction m for method r for results and c for conclusion so first of all it the abstract is going to contain the introduction the purpose of your research 
what's the motivation why are you doing this research what sort of topic have you selected what is the aim and objective of your research so i'm gonna uh, put this sentence in front of you so folks uh, read it carefully and then you're gonna find out what i'm talking about start with a clear purpose and this is how you're gonna start this study explores the impact of social media usage on academic performance focusing on university students in pakistan due to the growing concern about excessive screen time so after reading these lines uh, your audience your readers are going to get a pretty good idea that what you are going to achieve in your research that you are basically focusing on the social media usage you have selected pakistani students okay and you are basically focusing on their excessive screen time and how it is affecting their academic grades so this is how you are going to set the tone and the scope of your research through your abstract next up you have to describe your methodology okay summarize your approach you cannot just include all your research method and how you have collected the data and how you have analyzed it and how you have got to the bottom of it you just have to include only the main uh, part the main section which basically tells the readers in your abstract that which method have you used what sort of approach have you taken to answer your research question to find a solution to your research objective to test the hypothesis uh, which you have selected so look in front as i put an example before you a quantitative survey method was employed collecting the data from 500 students through structured questionnaires so basically in just two lines the researcher has given you an idea that quantitative approach has been used surveys have been put up there through online questionnaires 500 students sample has been selected and through them the data has been collected so again in minimum words the most important content is accurately being justified as i put forward the rules in front of you before okay so next up after this methodology section the next lines of your abstract are going to focus on your results your findings that what have you actually found okay so it's not like just you're going to say that okay i have taken this method and this is my observation and then you're not going to include the results so basically your abstract should also tell that what have you actually achieved okay so look at the example which i'm about to show you the study found that students who limit social media usage to less than two hours daily perform 20 percent better academically than those with excessive usage so basically through these lines the researcher has put in front of the readers and his audience that after collecting data and after the surveys and questionnaires it has been found out it has been decoded that those students who are using screen more are getting low grades and those students who are avoiding screen time are getting are performing better academically so that is your result okay the, your finding your answer to the research question okay your solution to the problem that is screen time affecting the students academic grades or not so there's your result and you have put forward your result in your result section in your abstract so even before your reader is gonna uh, look at your research paper or your thesis or dissertation even after uh, going through that abstract he or she is going to get a rough idea that okay these are your findings that okay this is what you have come up to so that is uh, your third part of abstract now moving to the final part you should also include your conclusion that you're not just gonna you know uh, mention the results and then just gonna leave abstract like this what is your conclusion what are your recommendations what are the implications for future research because research is a non-exhaustive process it's not like you're gonna do that research and then that topic is just gonna end there will be room for more research there will be room for more examination more investigation more analysis so that is where you have to leave some room for the future research so look at the example which i'm about to show you these findings contribute to existing literature by providing practical guidelines for improving academic productivity through controlled digital engagement so basically the researcher has shown that if you control the digital environment if you limit the access to screen or if you limit the screen time you're gonna get a different learning environment the uh, relationship between teacher and students is gonna improve maybe the classroom environments are gonna get better the academic grades are gonna improve students research skills students analytical critical thinking skills are gonna improve so that is basically the your conclusion and your recommendations which you have also put forward in your abstract so that was basically towards the end i would like to restate again that you need to use active voice in your abstract instead of using passive voice you have to avoid overly long and verbose sentences you have to focus on conciseness 
you have to include only the most relevant methodology and your results and your findings and remove the non significant data it's not like you're not going to include the minor details those details are for your uh, introduction chapter your discussion chapter your analysis chapter the conclusion chapter of your research not to be included in abstract when i say that they are not to be included in abstract it doesn't mean that you don't have to include in your thesis or research work i am also only saying that they should not be a part of your abstract okay they should be discussed later on then your references and citations should not be mentioned in your abstract any irrelevant examples should not be included in abstract you only have to focus on the most important content you have to avoid irrelevant terms or you have to avoid technical jargon because those people who are outside your field may not be familiar with the technical jargon that you're using and so if you're including it in your abstract part those readers might you know lose their interest and taste even after going through your abstract and they might not be interested in the uh, story that is to come later in in the main part of your research or your thesis or dissertation so you have to follow these rules very carefully and if you will follow these tips and tricks and if you will uh, for, uh, form your abstract like this then i'm pretty sure you're gonna nail your research work and you're gonna drive the maximum traffic on your website and your publications will you know just skyrocket and you know you will get a, a very good grades and marks and your cgpas will improve so that is, so these are basically the tips to writing the perfect uh, research abstract so do let me know viewers in the comment section what you thought about today's video and also recommend which research topic or angle would you like me to explore next i will see you all in the next video until then take care stay safe stay happy stay blessed allah is